here we are, day four of rebuilding my playing. So um, I <laughs> finished, I, well I took a break yesterday, but I didn't come back from that break. And I'd love to say that it's because I just had so many other really important things to do. Really didn't, but I did, I did end up editing the video and then we had a barbecue. But uh, I hate to end a practice session with that level of frustration. But the point is, it happens, right? I mean, let's just own it. Sometimes practice sessions just go south and we don't always recover. I, I love to say, oh, I took a 10 minute break and then I came back and problem solved and my, uh, whatever it was, my E harmonic minor scale was perfect, but I didn't come back to it. Uh, so that also means that yesterday I didn't get nearly as much accomplished as I had hoped for. I really only did long tones and then scales. And I never got to the fourth, which is what I was so excited to get to. But here's something that has resulted from that. It's realizing how many things I want to practice. So I think um, one of the other challenges I see with uh, aspiring musician students is that they, they seem to run out of things to practice. <laughs> and I find it interesting that I spent basically an hour and all I accomplished was long tones and not even making it through all of my major scales because I was putting in the work, I was fixing things that needed to be fixed. I was stopping and redoing over and over and over again. Uh, so when you really do that very detailed, uh, incredibly fastidious work, the time fills. And then you're not worried about, well, how many hours of practice time did I log today? That becomes completely inconsequential. When you change your thinking from, oh, I need to practice for two hours to, I just need to practice really well. Trust me, the hours are gonna stack naturally. So I think that's something else I, I see a lot from students where they're trying to fill their practice hours as opposed to just practicing really, really well and, and you will have much more to practice than you even have time to uh, accomplish all those things. So really think, changing your perspective with regard to that. So uh, it was funny, yesterday I said I'm not ready to do the uh, Simon Kovar attacks. I'm definitely ready as of today. So I'm just going to show you. Two. So this is the uh, Kovar. I put it. I put the picture in. I love this book. Such a fantastic book. And it has these sustained tones and attacks on the first page. You don't even really need to look at them. You literally can just pick a note, and then you're going to do four beats of either um, a staccato articulation soft or a tenuto articulation soft for your first four beats. So that can uh, that's going to open up a whole new can of worms. So let's get into this. Thank you. 
need to make sure that your maintenance is up to date because something like a leak, the, the uh, thank you, it's been 10 minutes, uh, it's been more than 10 minutes. Something like a leak will unravel how great your read is, how perfect your setup, right? If you've got a massive leak in one of your pads, especially on that long joint or, or the boot joint, obviously, really anywhere, uh, that can really unravel anything else that you're doing. So, you know, especially if you're preparing for auditions, make sure you're staying on top of your maintenance with a local repair um, technician because that you don't want to fight against that. That that because and you'll start to make yourself crazy. I've done it where it's like, what's going on? Why is nothing working? Why are my reads not working? And it really is. Then you go in, you leave it with a, a repair tech for a day, you pick it up and you play it. You're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> suddenly everything is fixed. So it is a very important variable. Um, especially if you are 100% confident that your reads are perfect and your setup is perfect. I'm not saying mine is, but it is just another variable to consider um, when trying to master all these things. I am gonna move on now. I'm gonna go back into these scales, but I'll tell you what, I'm doing my thirds and fourths today no matter how long it takes me. So something strange with my embouchure, good to notice it, especially if you are in a rebuilding phase of your playing, things like that, if we don't address it, can really start to turn into a bad habit. teaching where I noticed a student who had some notes cracking in her tender range. I said, make sure you're flicking, make sure you're flicking. And they said to me, I am flicking. And so I watched really carefully and realized that indeed their thumb was, was getting onto the key and even depressing it slightly, but not enough to actually vent the key. Now, something similar happens when we're up in that top range and we're moving around all these keys where we get our thumb to the key, we might even depress it, but if we don't open it all the way, that's when we start to get all this honking sound that you're hearing me do, okay? So, as, a, as I'm paying attention, I'm realizing, yes, I'm, I'm touching the key, I'm even pressing the key, but I'm not getting it all the way down, okay? I'm just, my thumb is being lazy. So, need to fix that. from the C sharp to the B, I'm just totally using the wrong fingering. I'm simply not playing the right fingers. So I mentioned this yesterday, I'm gonna say it again. If you're under the impression that after 20 years of being a professional bassoonist, as I have been, if five weeks, taking five weeks off your playing won't have a, a bit of negative impact, let me correct you. I have been a, uh, people have been play, paying me to play my bassoon for 20 years and uh, I've taken five weeks off and I am struggling to simply get my fingers to the right keys, okay? So it is very real. While breaks are important, keep in mind, there's going to be work required when you come back from that break. too is wonky. I noticed yesterday my high B, I was not hearing my high B correctly and I spent some time on it yesterday. It seems to be better today, but now I have some other. It's the A, the A is getting a little bit out. I'm also noticing that um, my 
feel like I'm spreading my fingers a little too far on my right hand, which is part of why I'm not getting to the right keys. Okay, so now I feel like my fingers are fine, my pitch is still not there. today to get into other things so what I have to do in this moment is is realize the B and the A are funky I'm hearing them incorrectly so I'm not quite at the point of mastering this scale but I'm going to move on being better informed and that's also valuable Like I feel like I'm not getting a good seal. I'm getting some leaking on the left side, which seems weird. Uh, I feel like I'm using a lot of pressure on this reed. I'm just going to see if I can uh, be more mindful of that and correct it as I move forward. Focus less on creating pressure and more on just a nice seal. So, I'm going to switch reads. I, I don't know what's up with this read. Just something just doesn't feel right in my mouth. So I have made it through all my scales finally. There was some reed finishing wrapped into that as well. So, which is great. I, I'm each day I'm playing on different reeds. I haven't repeated any reed yet. Thank <laughs> you. 
shared with me my senior year at Interlochen Arts Academy. Uh, if you need, if you feel like your tongue's getting a little thuddy, but you need to go faster, if you move off and kind of tongue on the left corner of the reed, you can kind of go. Mess around with it. Kind of move around. Move around towards that left corner. You kind of have to find the perfect spot for it. But it's there, and it will allow you to tongue faster. <laughs> Also be careful, don't, don't let that jaw get involved. Keep that jaw very still, and it's kind of a mid position. It's not up, and it's not super low, it's just really relaxed in that middle position. I always tell my students, if you find that um, you're having a hard time with repetitions, give yourself a bigger break. Don't slow down, because we're trying to um, essentially create endurance at faster tempos. So don't go slower, keep that same tempo as long as you can do it at least one time through and then give yourself more breaks and that's a better way to build towards faster tempos. The other thing I think about is that your tongue really has to float on that air. So your air has to be really consistent and driving that tongue. And really think of it like a flag flapping in the breeze where it's it's moving on the air let your tongue be the same way so it's a lot of very directional air coming out of you oh, all right so i've here we go two one okay 132 on my low C. Lots of work to be done. But that's a really such a wonderful, wonderful exercise. Um, highly recommend it. Oh, we have finally reached the point of thirds. And I'm, uh, I'm about an hour and 15 minutes in. So here we go. Thirds. I'm going to go to 80. Okay, I want to apply what I worked on two days ago. Keep it musical. So interesting how uncoordinated that's E to G, and there's just this, it's not clean. Getting my thumb and my pinky finger, they're just not coming up at the same time. shoulder 
and it goes down into my pinky finger, which is maybe why I'm having a little bit of a delay there. So I actually think, and I'm past the hour mark, I've been standing up when I go uh, work on my read, but I think I just need to take a quick break here and do some stretching so that um, I can keep going and not stop. All right, so as I come back and sit down, I'm gonna be very mindful of that. Uh, my chiropractor is always encouraging me to make sure I'm pulling my shoulders down and back from my ears. is leaking out of the corner which means my embouchure is done so a break is fast coming let me finish this a major oh, it's gonna be horrible okay well i didn't get to my fourth i'm gonna take a break i'd love to believe i'm gonna come back and do another hour but um it is labor day and we find it's fun to do something fun who knows, though, maybe I'll be back. So, ending thoughts for the day. So as I sit here, just for full disclosure, because this, for me, this uh, rebuild is really about coming back from an injury. Right now, all the places I have pain <laughs> is right in the center of my neck and actually in my elbow, and my lips are chapped. That's not a big deal, though. Uh, but it, I, I do want to just... I do want to really acknowledge the, the risk of injury. It is very, very real. And I see young people all the time uh, not being careful with their bodies. And I just want to shake you young people and say, you know, if you're essentially physically fit at this point, you know, you keep it up, maintain, strengthen, strengthen flexibility. I think if there's two things I wish I had been much more vigilant about, as a woman, I wish I'd worried less about my weight. I mean, obviously weight's a really big deal, but <clears throat> if I had been investing in my strength and my flexibility from the time I was, you know, 18 on, weight obviously would have been better anyways. Um, but strength and flexibility, I find like those are the two things that, that I have now built substantial deficits with, and those really start to uh, create injury. So lacking strength and a lacking flexibility, you start to hold your body in weird ways and then you create injuries in your body. So um, really, really take care of your bodies. If you aren't actively in some kind of regimen for strength and flexibility, find something, find something and do it early and just keep doing it. Keep coming back to it, keep trying. That's really important. Again, I cannot recommend enough um, Jenny Brandon, who is a composer, and a musician herself, and also a fabulous yoga instructor. Very, very mindful practice for musicians. Um, I will put her information in this video. She's just marvelous. She's just marvelous to work, to work with. And she uh, has a wonderful relationship with the Double Read community um, anyways. So if you can take any of her online yoga classes, I highly recommend it. 
So what did I do? I want to celebrate what I've done well today. Well, I practiced. Let's start with that. And I made it through my thirds. I haven't gotten to my fourths, but I made it through my thirds and I didn't skip over anything else. So we are chipping away. Um, I'm definitely going to have to start spending some more time with reeds. In general, I feel grateful. I feel grateful that I'm playing. And I feel really grateful that I've been able to play through so many injuries. <laughs> and I'm grateful for the opportunity I have to rebuild my playing right now. I start meetings tomorrow. The semester is going to pick up. And I my goal right now is just to make sure I'm doing daily practice. It's amazing that when you teach in higher ed, how quickly your time pulls you from um, a healthy daily practice regimen, especially I think because most bassoon professors across the country are not in positions where they only teach bassoon. That's really, really rare. So most of us are teaching bassoon and then academic courses on top of that. So uh, those are very demanding with your time. And so just making sure that I'm, I'm getting into, uh, that I maintain some kind of daily practice regimen is really key because I am rebuilding and I don't wanna, uh, become complacent and then just basically be in a constant state of out of shape, which happens to a lot of people who teach in higher ed. That's a very, very real issue. So thanks for watching. If you have made it this far, holy smokes, you are really determined to see this process through and I hope it helps you feel motivated. See you tomorrow.